Welcome back. Welcome back. This is a special Valentine's Day edition of the show, and we call it Love by Design. The road to bliss. It's bumpy, but those who are who could endure and push themselves will get over. Right through the stages, the next guest on the show are Victoria and Howard. They met each other in Wuxi in China in 2015. Victoria had just moved from London to China, and Howard had just returned back from Germany. And what looked like a chance meeting, it, was, it really looked like a chance meeting, developed into a friendship. Then it became romantic, a romantic relationship, and then marriage. Both of them now live in Freetown, where they run a business together. Victoria is Sierra Leonean, and Howard is Chinese. Their backgrounds are worlds apart, but they've managed to stay in love despite these differences. Please make welcome. Victoria. Victoria, it's, it's a great pleasure having you on the show. Thank and you. so is Howard. Yeah, thank you. Howard, um, Victoria, tell us, how did this happen? Wow. Okay. Well, let's go back. Let's, me. Go, back. let's go back to the past. I was born in Sierra Leone. Where exactly is Sierra um, I was born in Freetown and I was educated in the UK, lived in the UK, started working in the UK. And I worked with some multinational companies like ADAX, Bioenergy, African Minerals. We did some programs in the UK to try and recruit expatriates and bring them to Sierra Leone. Okay. So this was a project called Work Sierra Leone a couple of years ago. And um, when the Ebola outbreak happened, this project stopped. So then I took the opportunity to go to Asia and I went to China. And um, the company that recruited me, they usually would put you in a hotel for a couple of days. So the day I was supposed to move out and move into my apartment is also the day I was supposed to start work. So the hotel was trying to call a taxi for me to take my baggages into my apartment and then I can be able to go to work from there. But the problem is it was raining. So while it was raining, they couldn't get any taxi. So then I thought, okay, you know what? I'm not going to wait here because it's going to take a long time. Let me go outside and see if I can get a taxi for myself. So when I went outside, I remembered, oh my God, I'm in China. I can't speak Chinese. <laughs> so how am I going to explain to them what I need them to do? So I started looking around. I'm like, okay, which Chinese looks like they can speak English here? <laughs> So that's when I spotted Howard. Oh, that's 2015. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, that's when you spotted Howard. How, how did you know he looked like somebody who could speak English? He was wearing a suit, so I thought, well, anyone wearing a suit might be able to speak English, you know? Yeah. Because, and he was quite young as well. So okay. on average, you would find that the younger people are more likely to speak English. Ah, Whereas if you okay. go to somebody a little bit older, and often... If they're wearing a suit, they're usually quite educated. Okay. So I thought, okay, if they've gone to university, most likely they're they likely. Speak speak exactly. So I, I just looked in the room and I thought, okay, who amongst these people? <laughs> so then I spotted him and I went up to him and I said, excuse me, can you speak English? And he's like, looking at me like, huh? And he's like, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so, 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 over to you. So, so take, take it from there. In the morning, I just wake up and went outside to get, uh, get my driver to go to work. The moment when I went outside, I saw her uh, standing in the rain, uh, wandering around. I don't know what's happening <laughs> because I was uh, lost. <laughs> yeah. So when I crossed the street, she, uh, she asked me, uh, can you speak English? I say, oh, yes, I can. Then she start to tell me uh, she want to uh, uh, look for a taxi to go to work. Then I told her it's, um, it's raining now. Most people, they're going to use taxi to go to work. Yes, so it, Yeah, so it's hard to get a taxi. So I uh, take my mobile phone out to get an app to find a uh, bus for her. I also say, okay, uh, let's exchange our... Uh, Contact uh, details, oh, yes. yes. So we can, uh, so anything, if she need help, she she can contact me. How did you move on from that point to, to okay. something serious? Okay, so let me tell you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's do it. Let's do it. So, so since I made a new friend, I was so happy because yeah. I started work and um, I wanted to discover the city and see what there was to discover in the place. And I told him that, I also wanted to find business opportunities. So then he was more than happy to start showing me around. And he took me one time to a city that makes hair. And when I told him, he thought, oh, 
this girl is crazy. She wants to buy hair. What's wrong with this girl? He, he thought it was a scam. And he thought, there's no way people are selling their hair. I'm going to follow you just so that you don't get scammed. And um, he offered to come on one of these trips with me. So then he was so amazed that, wow, there's a whole industry of people buying hair. This is insane, you know? So then we started hanging out more and he started asking me more questions relating to business. And then he took me one day to a park on a date, he calls it. <laughs> and um, he wanted the date to be almost in the evening when the sun is setting. And I thought, why? It's so strange. Yeah. So he took me to a park that has a bridge, like the old Chinese bridge. And um, he, he stopped me in the middle of the bridge and he said, oh, look, look. I said, what am I looking at? <laughs> and he's like, look at the sky. I said, yes, the sky, uh-huh. And he's like, don't you see something about the sky? Okay, the, the sky is a sky. And he's like, oh, the sun is setting. I'm trying to be romantic. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I was like, oh, okay, okay. So that was then when I started noticing that he had an interest in me. Yeah. But how I decided that he was like somebody that I was really interested in was when we went to Tesco to go and do some shopping. I had a lot of shopping bags. You know, women will buy this, to buy this, mm-hmm. we want this ice cream. And um, I, I wanted to carry them back to my apartment. And he said, no, 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 no. Let me carry it for you. I was like, no, no, it's okay. I can carry it by myself. And he's like, no, 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 I can carry it for you. And he literally carried all the shopping bags all the way to the apartment. And it was a long walk, like 20 minutes walk. And I felt so sorry for him when he was carrying it. I was like, are you sure you don't want me to help you? And he's like, no, 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 I can carry it. And actually... That's when I decided that, wow, this guy is amazing, you know? Now, but let's get to uh, obstacles. Um, you know, you're Chinese. Nine chances out of 10, you'll be married to a Chinese. Yeah. Why? What did your parents have to say? For them, they just uh, give me the choice for me to choose. So when I met her, I think, oh, she is nice. And uh, she's the one I'm going to marry that I'm going to marry her. So, so, so otherwise, so how is he able to cope with the language? How is he? Um, at the beginning, it was a bit difficult for him. When I spoke, I spoke at a much... For me, it was natural pace, well, was but faster. to him it sounded faster. So I needed to slow down and try and get him to understand and catch up. And certain expressions that I will say he wouldn't understand. So we needed to get over that hurdle. But once he was able to start understanding me, then it became much easier. We <laughs> such events together. Alex! Alex. <laughs> <laughs> what would you say? Yeah, Alex is good. Alex is good. And I think us doing business together was also a great achievement. What kind of business do you do? Um, we have different kind of business. Here in Sierra Leone, we have a shop called Mini Titi, which is based in Lomley, and we do accessories, kind of like Claire's accessories, where you can get so many different things for your skincare, Jewelry, accessories like that. Mini yes. What's what's titi like? Titi as in titi. Girl, girl. Titi, I mean, titi. Mini like small girl. Small girl. Yeah, titi. because because I always wanted a girl. So ah, then I ended up having a boy. So I, I get provoked and they say, Oh, you have mini bubble. <laughs> <laughs> what's the biggest um, fight that you've had to have? Because every relationship goes through the past struggle stage. Mother in law moving in with me. <laughs> So this is more cultural um, because in China, normally the mother-in-law, if you are the youngest child, she will move in with you. Ah. So I didn't know that. So when they gifted us the house, I thought, oh, yeah, I have a house. And I didn't know my mother-in-law was going to pack her bags and say, hello, I'm coming in. (laughs) I'm like, what are you doing here? (laughs) So normally the mother-in-law wants to move in with the new bride to kind of help you get settled in the house. She'll cook for you, clean the house for you. It kind of find a role within the family structure. Uh So if she doesn't have a role, she'll feel a little bit strange, you know? When we first got married and we moved into our house, in the morning I could hear this woman shouting, Shafala, Shafala. I'm like, who is this person? And I looked out of the window, I saw my mother-in-law. I said, oh my God, she's outside. What's she doing here? And he's like, oh, she cooked breakfast for us. I said, huh? So then I was quite pleased and actually it ended up working out really well because at first I was thinking his mother was going to come and control everything and start telling us what to do. 
But then that would normally happen. Yes. Okay. She she was so helpful because even now we're not there. She looks after the house, she looks after my dogs, and she always checks on us and see how everything's going. What strategy have you come up with to deal with disagreements when you disagree? Uh, is there a framework? What framework do you have? I think the first thing is to realize that we are different. We have had... And it's not a crime. It's not a crime to be different. Um, so I think learning about each other's history, each other's country's history, the culture that we're from, like he's Han Chinese, I'm Creole. So understanding ourselves and understanding the background and the context was something that really made a big difference in our lives. But what's, what's from your, your own part of view, point, point of view, different culture, but you've, you've adjusted. And yeah. how difficult was it? For the culture, it's, uh, it's not a, a big deal for me. Um, I think it's only the language uh, to communicate, to talk with each other. The language is really a big uh, barrier for us. When we have a fight, I just uh, let, let her speak first what the point she wants to uh, express, then I will tell her what I'm going to say, what I'm going to eat. Uh, what uh, what kind of uh, a point I'm going to express? Then we're going to figure out the real problem. Put your hands together for them. It's been it's been wonderful having you here. And whilst whilst you're here, uh, we have a par couple. These are par Valentine couple, and they're getting married. What's your name? Um, Abdullahi. Abdullahi. Yeah. And what's your name? You are Ija too. Where do you stay, Abdullahi? Kisiwood. Uh, Kisiwood. You met no, you yeah. met Ija too in Cambia. Yeah. at a beauty pageant. Yeah. She was taking part in the beauty pageant. Yeah. Are you from Cambia? No. You to, you're not from Cambia. So what did you, what, what you go do in a Cambia and beauty pageant? Well, there's somebody coming with it. I said there's somebody coming with it. <laughs> now you mean, you, what, what, why, why, Cambia, what you go do Cambia and beauty pageant? No, um, they invite me there as a judge. I said, George, yeah, yeah. you see trouble. <laughs> and she was taking part in it. This is on my ass, it's on my ass already. <laughs> And I'm outside. So, so that's where you met, and you that was 2019. Yeah, 2019. Yeah. And um, and you say um, one month, three days from today. Yeah. One month, three days from today. Yeah. You're going to get married. Get married. Put your hands together for that. <laughs> uh, how many of the things that we don't share here so today? You either from uh, Victoria and Howard, or for me and me, me Valentine. Uh, <laughs> you know what? What you don't talk about? We, we really, you know, you said you don't shake your head. I did you first, then you just you said it to me. Yeah. Wait, you say you don't make and do this. I don't make and do. And that's why I go like for them in Maritan. Go over to you. Um, like um, I really to this relationship really because it's not easy. Mm -hmm. It's not easy for see. A Chinese for getting married. So, so yeah, 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 yeah. Because I'm working for Chinese also, you know, easy life okay. also. Um, like within the madame, they talk about so caring, um, you know, God fearing, like when in they just take you as a spoiled child, you do that everything. That was spoiled child. Like, like, they don't quell me. Just think, like, everything. <laughs> That's what you say. That's what you say. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because, imagine, <laughs> even when I off now, if you say I can't just lay me back, everything, and you just say pack him. Like, like even that. if I didn't have a phone, say if I didn't have a phone. You didn't say pass and give me. I don't get a problem. I don't get a problem. It's just, what have you learned? What have you learned? Well, I learned so many things. Mm -hmm. Firstly, for me, wife. Because woman, no matter how you man they, you get for always they there for them. Um, like example, where they say they pack you stuff, they make you food in the morning before you go work. Yeah, nice. Because at times, me mark don't say I eat stuff in day. A lot of times, thank you. When I wait for me food, say I go eat in the office. Ah, uh, no problem. Yeah, I'm not infected for that way. They can't take and say maybe not the time or not the way. I can turn like you say, okay, well, I just send them for you. Just for let you go eat the food in the morning, let you know, eat in the street. Because then they're very nice for let you get your partner. You make it used to the home food. Where they used to the home food, for let you eat in the street, it's not easy. Even if it's in the street, it go one for good, you can't eat it. And for sure, for sure, for sure, you know, say you know to side chick at all. No. <laughs> you know what I mean, chick? <laughs> Put your hands together for the house. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Put your hands together again for yourself. 
It's been a great pleasure. It's been a great pleasure having you here, Victoria and Howard, and to the fantastic team who put this thing together. I'm so pleased. I'm so thrilled that you could join us. But let me close with this word for you. This show has been on air for 10 years. And what we've essentially said in the show, you know to automaton. You know, they not only crank, crank you and left you. And so that outside the crank, carry you go, that's where you end up. You were meant to have control over your life, over the direction of your life, in every facet, your professional life, business life, career, academics, uh, personal life, relationships. You were meant to be in charge, you were meant to be in control. There are tough decisions that you have to be able to take to decide where you want to go and how to get there. So we'll meet again. I am Joe, wishing you the best on your road to bliss. God bless you. Put your hands together. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you.